This video is brought to you by Honey! Since my last video on Animal Crossing, a lot of people have been asking me to do a follow-up video. I've played Animal Crossing for 500 hours, maybe. I've played Animal Crossing for 1,000 hours as a possible fact. But let me stop wasting my vocal cords. It's time to see the big reveal. So it's true, Goonville has decayed. I mean, I don't know, maybe dedicating 40% of my time to playing Animal Crossing and 40% of my time making a video about Animal Crossing might have burned me out a tiny bit. But it definitely seems like this isn't just me. I'm pretty sure 90% of my friends who were playing Animal Crossing at launch have completely dropped it. And even though me and nine out of 10 of my friends can now be considered losers, people putting down the game can be easily justified. A feeling like you've done everything, repetition of playing, getting frustrated with joining your friends, even though the animation is quite cute, it gets infuriating after a while. I really hate getting the same recipe in a bottle, but that one's the worst one. However, there's not a chance Nintendo doesn't know people are getting burnt out. I mean, I would personally consider it a series staple, but more than ever, and probably due to New Horizon success, they've really tried to get us back into playing like we were at launch. Like before, before the game was even released, we were told seasonal events weren't in the base game and instead would appear in updates throughout the year. So if you're burnt out like me and ashamed to say it, this video we're going to look over all the major updates released for the game and take a gander to see if Nintendo are going the right way about it. However, before we dive into the video, I want to take a moment to talk about today's wonderful sponsor, Honey. Not to be confused with the bees, this is a free browser extension. So what is Honey you might be asking? Well, along with tasting great with cheese, Honey saves you cheese. Honey is one of the most useful tools for shopping online. When you're at checkout, Honey searches for promo codes all across the internet and finds the best one and applies it to your basket entirely automatically. Like you ever speak to Orville and go on a mystery island tour and all you can find is ugly villages and you keep going over and over and over again but you can't find anyone you like? Honey's like if you went to go speak to Orville and he just handed you over Wolfgang. But Wolfgang's a discount code and you're actually on dominoes.com. And using Honey is so easy and simple. All you gotta do is install it, that takes about two seconds, and then when you're at checkout, the Honey Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for the best coupons for the site and then it will conclude your purchase with the best deal possible. Like a few days ago, I was buying some clothes on ASOS and Honey managed to save me over 20% and all it takes is clicking the link at the top of the description and you can install Honey in seconds. And by getting Honey, you won't just be saving yourself money, but you also seriously help support the channel. And you can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash getmads. That's joinhoney.com slash getmads. Again, big ups to Honey for sponsoring today's video. So, as of August 2020, there's been four major updates for New Horizons. Now, technically, the first major update we got was Bunny Day. There's not really much else to say about this update because it launched with the game. But luckily, we didn't have to wait too long because only a month later, we got update 1.2. And in this April update, we got Leaf, the garden-obsessed sloth who sells you flowers and the brand new bushes added to the game. We also got Red, who took advantage of a beach at the top of your island and is now polluting the sea to make profit on stolen artifacts. And our Owl Run Museum got an upgrade to hold those stolen artifacts. And along with these new features, we also got some seasonal events added with the April update. Nature Day, where you earned bonus nook miles for planting shrubs. May Day, which was a custom Mystery Island tour with Rover at the end if you completed it. International Museum Day where you just walked around your museum. And Wedding Season, where for the entire month of June, you could go to Harvey's Island to take anniversary photos of Reese and Cyrus in exchange for wedding themed items. By the time we reached May, I was already kind of getting bored with the game. But having events like May Day or Museum Day were actually really nice to break up the routine. May Day especially, that was surprisingly fun and I hope they do more custom islands like that in the future. Please a haunted maze for Halloween. But by the time we reached June and it was wedding season, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> this was the only new thing coming in June, and since it didn't really interest me, I kind of just fell off playing. And since the April update covered April, May, and June, it felt like it was taking forever to get the next update, especially when there isn't any other games coming out from Nintendo this year. And then finally, on June 25th, we got a trailer showing off the first wave of the summer update. I like what they did there with wave, that's fun. So instead of having a big bunch of features released at once, which could get us through a couple months, we got a few features released in July and promised a second wave to come in August. In the summer update wave one, we got swimming return from New Leaf. This lets you go swimming in your ocean and collect underwater creatures. And Pascal, a veteran of previous Animal Crossing games, also made a return in this update. If you ever find a scallop while diving, he pops out of the water and is like, oi, give it to me please. And if you give it to him, he randomly rewards you with a gift. But the best thing about Pascal is when he leaves. No, I'm not being mean. I, I, I'm just saying that his execute is very cute. <laughs> Look at him. And then we have a brand new character into the fray, Gulliver. So from the looks of it, Gulliver is just Gulliver, but 
more cool. <laughs> if you were getting tired of digging up a communication device broken across your beach, don't worry, because with Gullivar, he lost his iPhone out at sea. Even though this was overall a smaller update, we were promised to get new features next month. And around a month ago on July 30th, we got wave two of a summer update. This update came with two main features, firework nights every Sunday in August, and Lunar and the Dream Suit make a return from New Leaf. In general, having content done in waves seems way smarter. There's more opportunity for Nintendo to remind people about the game, it gives players something to look forward to, and we don't have to wait too long. But somehow with both summer updates, I ended up just messing around for features for a day or two and then put down the game again. I don't think I've even met Gullivar yet. So yes, there is definitely a problem with how Nintendo are handling the updates. And I didn't really know how to explain my issues with the updating system, so I made a flowchart instead. So the main thing about the Animal Crossing flowchart is that people get stuck in loops. You might be one of those people who start the game and play every single day and don't stop, and then they're just stuck in this loop over and over and over and over again. But then after a while, they might get bored. And then from there, they might just start playing sometimes, you know, every other day or once a week. But even then, it can start getting a bit taxing and tiring. And they can get bored even more so, to the point where they stop playing entirely. Now in previous Animal Crossing games, you might just get a feeling to pick the game back up and then be intimidated by the chores, you know, picking the weeds, getting your villagers yelling at you, asking where you've been for the past two months. And then you would either clean up your town and start playing again, be too intimidated and just entirely drop the game again, or reset your island for a fresh start, which the last one I don't recommend. <laughs> but the main problem with previous titles in the franchise is there's no incentive to pick the game back up. It's entirely reliant on the player. But now with consistent updates in New Horizons, it now just controls that variable of when people pick the game back up. But then once we pick up the game and try out the features, it just leaves the player with a question. Once I clear up my island and get everything back to normal, am I just gonna get bored again? Or do the new features entice me enough to continue to play? And this is where having these smaller updates every month or so could be possibly damaging the player base. For most people, these smaller updates end up just giving a feature which you can do in a day before putting the game back down. And I don't really know about you, but that doesn't really seem like an effective way of getting me back into playing like I was at launch. And there's another thing I've noticed about these updates. Swimming, Dream Suite, Bushes, Red, all of these features have just been iterations from New Leaf. The only additions and updates which are entirely new to the Animal Crossing franchise are May Day, Museum Day, and Wedding Season. And as I said earlier, that makes returning players even less inclined to check out the updates. So let's think of the Animal Crossing franchise as an ice cream store, and New Horizons is a brand new flavor added. It feels entirely different to anything else you've tasted. And then you're told by Nintendo that you're gonna get a bunch of cool toppings on top of that ice cream throughout the year. But then when you go up to Nintendo and ask for the new topping, they just give you the same toppings you had for New Leaf. And so, if you're a long-time fan of a franchise, it's hard to get excited even though you know these features make the game better. Like in the perfect world, New Horizons would start with all the features from New Leaf, and all the updates for the game would be entirely new. But... No. But seeing in interviews that the developers want to support this game for two to three years makes me hope that this is only going to be a temporary issue. And I mean, just thinking about entirely new ideas that could add to the game is exciting in itself. Like, what about crops which have a similar halving system to fruit? And it could all be seasonal, just like how you collect certain bugs and certain fish in certain months. A feature like that would make a perfect autumn release. Or what about snowball fights as a new addition to the winter update? That would be such a fun mini game to do with friends and villagers. Or what about reiterating of a swimming feature in a future summer update? There could be a small deserted island which you could swim out to and dig a buried treasure there. Not only will this make longtime fans and new players interested in playing, but a feature like crops which might show daily growth till harvest would incentivize players to check in every day instead of trying all the features out for one or two days and then putting down the game again. Brand new content added to the game and additional quality of life improvements I'm certain would get an influx of players interested in the game again. Overall, Nintendo really doesn't have that many games this year. Except for Pikmin 3. That, that, that's a good purchase. But you know, there is a pandemic going on and Animal Crossing is all about patience anyway. And you're a scoundrel who time travels. But no matter how often I play this game or how many updates get added, it will never satisfy my materialistic need for more fruit variations and Nintendo items added to the game. I don't care about anything else on New Leaf. Can we have these pictures back, please? Hey, just want to quickly say thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. And thank you to all of the people you see on screen for helping to fund the secondary artist, Jackadamia, for doing some incredible artwork on this video. Big shout out to Jack and make sure to go follow him and check him out. Also, I want to quickly mention, I'm in a card game. How cool is that? So me and a bunch of chums got together and now we're in an expansion pass for Cafe Chaos, which is really cool. So if you're interested in that at all, make sure to check out my community post about it or my Twitter. I'm probably going to make a tweet about it. And with that, out of the ways... Bye. <laughs>